All right, folks, welcome to our presentation, the first sermon, part one. So the first sermon, as is indicated in the title, is the first sermon that Buddha delivered after attaining enlightenment and nirvana under the Bodhi tree. And it was delivered to his five previous ascetic companions who abandoned him for dead when Buddha was practicing extreme self-torture. And the first sermon is important because it is within this sermon that Buddha reveals what we might call the basic principles of Buddhism. The two useless paths, the four noble truths, the middle path, also known as the noble eightfold path. So now that we have some context, let us jump right into the sermon. So I have a diagram here in the shape of a path, and it is in the shape of the Buddhist path. Now remember, Buddhists wish to attain three things, enlightenment, nirvana, and paranirvana. So how do we attain enlightenment, nirvana, and paranirvana? Well, let's take a look at the sermon uh, in order to learn what paths we shouldn't take. So the Buddha says here, then the exalted one spoke to the group of five monks, these two extremes, O monk, should not be practiced by the one who is going forth from the household life. What are the two? That which is linked with sensual desires, which is low, vulgar, common, unworthy, and useless. And that which is linked with self-torture, which is painful, unworthy, and useless. That is, two useless paths are to be avoided by those seeking salvation. The path of sensual pleasure and the path of self-torture. So, for the one who has renounced the household life, who wants to become a monk or a nun, so to achieve enlightenment, nirvana, and paranirvana, what are the two paths that are to be avoided? The path of sensual desire and the path of self-torture. And why should they be avoided? Because they do not lead to enlightenment, nirvana, and paranirvana, but rather they are false paths that only lead to further suffering. Now for those who um, have some familiarity with Buddha's life, you may see that this rings a bell because the first useless path refers to Buddha's life as a prince, and the second useless path refers to his life as a radical ascetic. So in other words, Buddha, through his own experiences, lived these kinds of lives and knows that they only lead to further suffering. So for Buddha, these paths only lead to further mental, emotional, and physical suffering, and they lead us further away from enlightenment and nirvana. And this point will be further elucidated in the next presentation. But for now, let us analyze the next question. So we know what the two useless paths are. So what is the useful path that will lead us to salvation? Well, let's turn again uh, to the first sermon. So Buddha says, by avoiding these two extremes, the Tathagata or truth seeker has gained the knowledge of the middle path, which gives vision and knowledge and leads to calm, to clairvoyances, to enlightenment, to nirvana. So, the path that leads to salvation is the middle path, which is also known as the Noble Eightfold Path. And this is the path of salvation in Buddhism, where the seeker of nirvana adopts spiritual practices which lie between the extremes of sensual pleasure and self-torture. And ultimately, the middle path is one of what we might call moderate self-denial, in which the Buddhist will gradually become non-attached to the world. And this concept of non-attachment will be clarified in the next lecture. So let's wrap up. So in the first half of the first sermon, Buddha says that there are two paths that, to that are to be avoided by uh, the one who has renounced the household life. The path of sensual desire and the path of self-torture. And thus the only useful path that leads to enlightenment, nirvana, and paranirvana are the middle path, also known as the Noble Eightfold Path, which leads to salvation. 
And in the next lecture, we will study the second half of the first sermon where we will discuss the four noble truths.